Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. Today, we are doing something exciting. We are going to design a complete website from start to finish using Figma. So why design websites in Figma? Well, Figma is more than just a design tool. It's a powerful platform that lets you create, collaborate, and prototype all in one place. With its real-time collaboration, you can work with your team seamlessly, whether you're in the same room or across the world. Plus, Figma's cloud-based system means you can access your designs from anywhere. No more worrying about losing files. And the best part? It's built with web design in mind. From creating responsive layouts to easily exporting assets for developers, Figma makes the whole process smoother and faster. So in this tutorial, we are going to build a website from scratch and I'll show you how Figma helps every step of the way. By the end of this video, you'll not only have a beautiful website design, but also the skills to use Figma effectively for your own projects. So let's jump in. Craving a career upgrade? Subscribe, like, and comment below. Dive into the link in the description to fast track your ambitions. Whether you're making a switch or aiming higher, Simply Learn has your back. But before that, if you're interested in a career in UI UX, join our immersive UI UX certification program and become an expert in just five months. The course offers live online classes led by Reroom faculty from IIT Bangalore. Get hands on with capstone projects, craft your portfolio on Dribble, and receive personalized coaching on top designer tools. Simply Learn's job assistance is here to support your journey every step of the way. Enroll now and unlock endless possibilities in the realm of UI UX design. So let's move on to the demo. So to begin with, make sure you are signed into your Figma account. Now, if you don't already have an account, you can create one for free. And once you're logged in, navigate your draft section and create a new design file by clicking on new design. This will open up a blank canvas where we'll be designing our portfolio website. So now let's take a moment to familiarize ourselves with how Figma works. Figma operates using frames, which are like individual pages or sections of your design. So everything you create sits inside these frames. So let's go ahead and create our frame for the photography portfolio website. And by the way, for this demo, we'll be creating a photography portfolio website, right? So let's get started. So go to the left hand toolbar and select the frame tool. Or simply press F on your keyboard for a shortcut. Now in the properties, as you can see on the right side, you'll see different preset frame sizes like mobiles, tablet, desktop. So since we are designing a website for desktop view, select the desktop option. Yeah. So this is around 1400 pixels wide. This will be our canvas for the photography portfolio. So it's always important to start your design with the correct frame size. This ensures that your layout will be responsive and function correctly across devices. Now, before we dive into adding images or text, we need to set up the structure of the layout. So the key to a well-organized website is a well-planned layout, right? The photography portfolio website we are designing today will have three main sections. The header with navigation links, the portfolio gallery showcasing our images, and a footer with social media links and a contact section. So you can use a rectangle tool or press R in your keyboard to create a large rectangle at the top of a frame like this. This will be the header where we'll add the site title and navigation links. Now next, create another large rectangle below the header. So this is where we'll be placing the portfolio gallery, which is a central focus of our website. So you can just copy this rectangle, paste it, move it downward, and increase the size because this is the central part. You can also increase the size of the frame like this. Okay, now let's zoom in. Okay, and finally create a third rectangle at the bottom for the footer, which will hold the social media links and a small contact form. Again, you can just paste it. Yes, perfect. Now we are not worried about the exact sizes right now, so we'll adjust everything later as we add content. For now, just ensure you have three sections laid out on your canvas. Now structuring your layout before getting into the design details keeps you organized and ensures a smooth design process. So avoid focusing on details too early. This will save your time and prevent you from getting lost in the finer points of the design. 
So now that we have blocked out the basic structure of the portfolio, let's add a grid to ensure that all our elements are perfectly aligned. So in web design, basically a grid system is used to maintain visual consistency and provide structure. So most websites follow a 12 column grid system and we are going to use the same for this photography portfolio. So here you can select the main frame, which is the desktop. So in the right hand panel, look out for the layout grid. Option and click on the plus sign to add a grid. So by default, Figma applies a square grid, but we need a column based grid. So click on the grid icon and you can select column. And set the number of columns to 12. Yeah. So now we need these columns to be center aligned. So let's just change this type to center. Yeah. And adjust the column width to 75 pixels. Perfect. So now that our grid is set, you'll notice that each section we created is divided evenly by these columns. This makes it easier to place images and text, ensuring everything is aligned neatly within the design. So a grid system not only helps with alignment, but also improves the readability and flow of the design. Using a grid ensures that your website feels balanced and consistent across devices. So now let's move on to the header section. Let's just zoom in a bit. Yeah. Now this will have the site title and navigation links like home, portfolio, about me and contact. We'll also give this header a transparent look over a background image. So first you have to select the top rectangle, which is the header section and adjust its height to around 150 pixels. So here you can change the height into 150 pixels. This will give us enough space to include the title and navigation links. Now next we'll add a background image to the header. So how do we do that? So first select this rectangle. Go to fill. Let's just close these. Just a second. Yeah. Go there. Select an image. Choose an image. Let's choose this image. And yeah. And you can also, you know, change the exposure, contrast saturation you can do all these settings and as you can see this is a very light image i think it's visible it's like raindrops i want to keep it subtle so that's why i've kept it this way you can add images of your choice now next let's add the site title so now select the text tool the shortcut of which is t and click within the header section yeah and type the photography's name for example, this is Sneha's photography. And we'll use the Google font Playfair display. So here you can go and change the font. And we can give the font size at 48. I think this is pretty decent. And align it to the left side of the header. So let's align it to the left side. So as you can see, we won't go beyond this grid. As you remember, this grid is for our reference and we are not supposed to add anything over this side and this side. So let's, yeah. I think this is fine. Now let's add some simple navigation links like home, portfolio, about me and contact. So you can create each of these links using the text tool and align them to the right of the header. Again, just use the shortcut. Here, you can give an about. This you can keep it, the font size is 18. I think this is more than enough. You can keep it 20, I guess. Yeah. So we'll align everything later. We'll just add right now the text that we need. Home. And let's keep just one more, which is contact. Right? Now we'll align all this towards the right. Yes. And again, I'm reminding you to use the grid. Yes, see how simple it was for me to give equal spaces among these, right? So always keep your header design clean and simple, especially for portfolio websites like this, because our main focus is on the work, right? 
So now that we have a header in place, it's time to work on the gallery, which is the main focus of the design. So this section will showcase the grid of your best photography work. So here you have to go to the section of the frame, the larger rectangle that we have. Now we are planning to create a grid of two rows and four images in each row. So to do this, we have to use the rectangular tool R and then we'll duplicate it. Just draw a rectangle. We'll give it white color so that it's visible. Yep. Now let's duplicate it and keep it here. And we can keep it here. I think it's fine. Just a second. Yeah, now it's fine. Now you can just duplicate it by, you know, selecting Alt option and bringing it down like this. Perfect. So we did not need this to be this big. So let's just adjust this section. Yes. So now we'll replace these placeholders. So this is basically the placeholders where we are going to place our images. So we are going to replace it with actual images. So you can simply click on each rectangle, go to fill, select image fill and upload images one by one. For example, here you can go to fill, image, you can go and choose your image, see, fantastic, so you can do this one by one, So when designing a portfolio gallery, it's important to maintain a clean grid-based layout. This allows your images to shine without distractions, giving them the space they need to stand out. So now let's add a subtle gradient background to make the portfolio image pop. So here you have to select the portfolio gallery background, go to the fill section and change the background from solid to linear gradient. So this is gradient option. Now you have to choose a dark tone on one side of the gradient and a lighter tone on the other hand. So for example, start with black at the bottom, fading to dark gray at the top. Yeah, let's do it this way. We can even change the color. I think we can keep it. Shall we keep, I think this is better. This is more better. So let's keep it this way. Now this will, as you can see, this has created a smooth transition. So as you can see, a subtle gradient can create a sense of depth and dimension. It ensures our portfolio stands out. Now let's go and design the footer section. So let's just decrease the frame because we don't need this much. Just a second, let's select the frame. We have in the footer here. Of course, I'm just giving you a basic idea on how to use the features. And as you can see, I've just added the images over here, but then you can write text, create a text field, and you can explain what the image is about and everything and make it more interesting. So now select the bottom rectangle, which is the footer, and change its color to black or dark gray. Let's change it to black. This will contrast nicely with the rest of the site. So you can easily find free SVG icons online at resources like Icon Finder or Flat Icon. So you can download icons for platforms like Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn and drag them directly into the Figma canvas. So now in the photo section, you'll be giving your contact details like your social media links, social media accounts and also your email, phone number and in whichever way they can contact you, right? Basically, that's why the footer is used for every website. So here we can just give an email ID. So we can keep it towards the left. Now 
and always try to keep your font size and font style so here i have just added the email address for contact you can also give your phone number and also if you have social media accounts what you can do is you can actually download social media icons from you know websites like icon finder or flat icon and you can download those icons as svg format and upload them so now let's talk more about auto layout one of figma's most powerful tool for keeping elements organized and perfectly spaced so auto layout is essential when you need dynamic resizing and consistent spacing here's how it works so you can select any set of elements that need to be evenly spaced or grouped for example the images in your portfolio gallery so we can select these elements and press shift a to group the elements in auto layout you'll notice that figma automatically spaces them out evenly and you can also adjust the padding and gap values in the right hand panel to control the spacing between elements this is especially useful if you want to maintain equal distances between your images also you can use effects like shadows and gradients so this goal is to add subtle depth without overwhelming the content so now that we have designed the entire portfolio website it's time to zoom out and review everything so you can just zoom out and review i haven't added anything much this is just a basic idea that i have covered so you can zoom out and check how your website looks and you know check the alignments spacing and everything so one thing that you must make sure is that the text and images must be balanced so if necessary you can go back to any section and adjust the size or spacing of elements using auto layout or manual alignment tools and finally you can just you know remove this grid and see how it looks so right now you know you're viewing it with the grid so you might not get a complete idea so for removing the grid what you can do is go to the layout grid and here you can see a symbol just switch it off so this is how your website will look like without the grid so that was it in this video i hope you got a basic idea on how to create a website from scratch without using any coding in figma so i hope you enjoyed the video if you like the video do give us a thumbs up and subscribe for more updates thanks for watching Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.